Let me talk about the issue of gays in the military. The president has told you that he wants to repeal the don't ask, don't tell policy so that gays and lesbians right. can serve openly in the military. And the Pentagon said this week that you personally, along with Secretary Gates, are working to address the challenges associated with implementing the president's commitment. What exactly are you doing and what exactly are you worried about? The president has made his strategic intent very clear that it's, it's his intent at some point in time to ask Congress to change this law. I think it's important to also know that this is the law, this isn't a policy, and that for, for the rules to change, a, a, a law has to be passed. And there's legislation introduced in the Congress there, now. And there that. is, exactly. And, and so uh, I've had uh, discussions with uh, the Joint Chiefs about this. I've done certainly a lot of internal uh, to immediate staff uh, discussions about what the issues would be uh, and how but what we... What are they? What, what are the challenges? Well, the, I, the, the, it's my job as a senior military advisor to uh, provide best advice, best military advice to the president. And what I owe him is an objective assessment of what these changes would be, what they might impact on. And there could be speculation about what that might be. But my goal would be to achieve an objective assessment of, of the impact, if any, uh, of this kind of change. In addition, you know, I would need some time uh, for a force that's under a great deal of stress. We're in our, you know, sixth year of fighting two wars to, uh, to look at, if this change occurs, to look at uh, implementing it in a very deliberate, measured way. And, and uh, what I also owe the president, and I owe the men and women in uniform, is an impl implementation plan to, uh, to uh, achieve this based on a timeline that would be set, obviously, after the loss change. One of your predecessors, General John uh, Shalikashvili, who was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs back in the early 90s, uh, has said he has second thoughts uh, on this whole issue. Sure. Now, he was against uh, opening up services to gays and lesbians then. Now he's written, I now believe that if gay men and lesbians served openly in the United States military, they would not undermine the efficacy of the armed forces. Our military has been stretched thin by our deployments in the Middle East, and we must welcome the service of any American who is willing and able to do the job. Is he right? He's uh, certainly entitled to his, uh, his own uh, personal opinion, and, and certainly I have the greatest respect for him. Uh, there, are, there are also lots of uh, retired generals and admirals uh, on the other side. What's and your what opinion? I, what, I would, what I would hope to do in this... Uh, George, again, given the strategic intent of the president, is to uh, to avoid uh, a, a a polarizing debate that puts a force that's very significantly under stress in the middle, and to get this get to this, assuming the law uh, is going to change, in a, and again, a measured, deliberate way, uh, and that, as the senior military leader, is what I consider my principal measured, deliberate way. So it sounds like if the Congress calls you up to testify in this law, you're going to say now is not the time to repeal. No, I actually, uh, uh, I'm going to talk to the process that we have in this country, which is we file the law, and if the law changes, we'll comply. There's absolutely no question about that. We have